Anytime you, you don't get up, you're going to get blown out of the water. So, I mean, uh, the fear of losing is a great motivator. Um, uh, the fear of the, the enjoyment of playing against the best to challenge yourselves is, is really important. So I think that's one of the reasons that, you know, I mean, the last three games actually from the one last year uh, that we've had success against them. But, I mean, in the end, if you can, if you can stop Nathan McKinnon, you're usually... Um, having a good job, a good chance of, of stopping them. Bruce, there tends to be like a profile of team that this club, dating back years, can struggle to match up with, and the Avs seem to fit that profile to a T with their speed, the puck moving defense, and yet, for whatever reason, it seems like your club always has a lot of success against them, even plays clean games against them. Yeah, I, you know what, I mean, uh, it seems uh, there's some teams that we play our best against, and uh, uh, this group of players and maybe coaches uh, that uh, we get up more for a team like this and uh, we'll see if we can do it again. It's a, you do it once is, is great, to do it twice is really difficult, uh, to do it three times uh, would be really tough. Now that they're starting to, they're getting in their playoff uh, mode right now. I mean, uh, they fell behind and, and the, their sense of urgency is, is now. So I mean, uh, they're playing really well, and uh, their leader is leading by example. So, I mean, it'll be a tough task, but we'll see how we do. Are you expecting to have Dermot back in? I'm expecting it, yeah. Brad Hunt's been, been filling in in the half lineup. I know you coached him a bit. What, what stands out him? Stands out about him? Well, he's a pretty good offensive defenseman. Um, he's uh, uh, When he was in the American League, he would be the best defenseman in the league as an offensive defenseman. He's got a great shot. And uh, uh, and he's a tremendous teammate. So I mean, uh, that's it's hard not to it's hard uh, not to see him not being liked by his teammates, and they want him in the lineup. So I mean, that's just the kind of personality that he has. Is that just his general positivity and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Is there a kinship between you two because of the positive outlook that you both share based on your time in Minnesota and Vancouver? I don't know. I just you know. Actually, it was before that. John Anderson really liked him in Chicago, and John Anderson's a very good friend of mine. So automatically, before I met him, I had a like for him because of what John would say. And then uh, in in Mini, he was he was great. I mean, didn't play an awful lot. The same thing here, you know, uh, when we got him from Vegas uh, in Mini, and then to here, it uh, uh, he's. You know he's a, he's an older guy now. He's 34, 35 years old, and he and he still comes to the, the rink every day, feeling great, wanting to play. And so I mean, how you uh, and loving the game, and how you can't like a guy like that is beyond me. Bruce, uh, Dakota had that magical night in San Jose with the two goals and the fight, and almost had the Gordie Howe hat trick. How, how much of a challenge is, is it for a fourth line guy? to sustain his five-on-five five play, not necessarily his scoring, but but be the guy that doesn't get scored on, can forecheck hard. He talked a bit about it this morning, how hard it is to sustain that kind of thing. Well, it's it's difficult, but I think it's uh, uh, it's more difficult for younger guys that haven't done it before. And, I mean, he's in the American League. He's a top six forward, and, and, he's, and he's constantly playing. When you're in the third and fourth line so, and you're playing 10, 11 minutes a night, I mean, you really got to... It's a, it's a lot of a, is mental, uh, a mental game where it's to stay involved in the game, especially when you're a bigger guy and you're sitting on the bench for maybe seven minutes at a time. And I think sometimes, like in Carolina, we were able to roll the lines. There wasn't a lot of penalties, and he gets involved more, and then it's an easier game for him, you know? Right. Thanks. Bruce, with all the speculation that's of what? been, <laughs> been around your club. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> how, how do you personally approach this back to back and, and will you take some time to savor it? I don't know yet. I really, you know, I mean, I'd be a fool not to say that I don't know what's going on, but uh, um, I just, like I said before, you come to work and uh, uh, you realize, you know, how great the game is. No. It's, it's on the road, it's easier perhaps to shut out the noise. How do you tell the guys in terms of shutting out the noise at home? How much more of a challenge is that? Well, I didn't say anything today. I mean, uh, um, but I mean, there might be things said tomorrow. But, you know, I mean, they know. I mean, you know, it's a, there's a lot of media here. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I've got my wife phoning me saying, "You're not on the ice. Is everything okay?" You know, like I mean, so you guys are getting it out all over the the country. So it's 
it's it's uh, it's tough not to, to to feel it. But I mean, you just look at you love it. You want to go do it. And so I mean, that's uh, that's the way I shut it out. And uh, is basically just you know just realizing how much you care about the game and the players and all that goes on. What did you tell your wife? I said, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't go on the ice all the time, you know? Like, wow. Bruce, we thought we saw you get a little emotional just now. What does it mean to you to be a head coach in this league? I'll talk later. 